So while I have been absolutely loving my time with the S24 Ultra, I have been getting a lot of questions about this, the OnePlus 12. I'll admit this phone wasn't on my radar. I did spend some time with the OnePlus Open, which I did really enjoy, but as far as OnePlus's regular flagship contenders go, this is a first for me. And I have to say that starting with the unboxing experience, I was pretty pleased. The phone comes with everything that you need right out of the gate, like an 80 watt power supply for fast charging, a nice red USB-C to A cable, an OTG connector, and the SIM tool. The first thing that I noticed when taking the OnePlus 12 out of the box though was this cheapo pre-applied screen protector. And while I have my reservations about the quality, I'm glad that it comes with one pre-installed for a handful of reasons. The OnePlus 12 has a curved display, which at a glance is something that looks really nice and feels good in the hand. Though in recent years, I've started to really feel different towards these kinds of displays, as screen protectors for them can be very difficult to find, require a lot of extra steps or adhesive, which can also damage the phone, and in general, just be far more expensive. And I'll be honest, while I do typically enjoy the eye candy that looking at a curved display gets me, the OnePlus 12 has a really weird color shift problem. Both sides of the phone look super dim or gray when showing a white background, which sucks for me because I am a light mode user. You won't notice this when watching content, playing games, or doing anything day to day if you're using dark mode, but for me, this is something that immediately makes the phone feel cheaper. However, let's talk about the price for a second because there's a pretty big disparity between something like the OnePlus 12 and the S24 Ultra. The model that I have here is the Flowey Green in 512 gigabytes, which cost me about 1300 Canadian after tax. The S24 Ultra is much closer to 2000 Canadian for the 512 gig variant, which is a pretty drastic price jump of 700 Canadian dollars. And let's not let that slide for a second, $700 is a lot of money. That's literally enough to go buy yourself an entirely new phone if you're looking at the OnePlus 12 and you wanna pick up the OnePlus 12R for example. Very convoluted way of saying that, but it's a lot of money. So for being 35% cheaper than the S24 Ultra, is it 35% less? Are you getting 35% less of the experience than you are on something like this? Well, no. <laughs> it actually has a sharper display at 510 pixels per inch in QHD+, a peak brightness of 4,500 nits in HDR versus the 2600 on the S24 Ultra. However, you can only really achieve that with auto brightness, and I've also come to learn that this does not reach really anything near 2000 when outdoors. So as far as display brightness goes, and in terms of what I've actually experienced in person, the S24 Ultra display is still brighter. But it does also have the same Adreno 750 GPU, a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, more RAM at 16 gigs versus 12 gigs on the S24 Ultra, as well as a bigger 5,400 milliamp hour battery. It does have a higher screen to body ratio, and in my opinion, far better speakers. But let's also not forget about the 80 watt fast charging here in North America, as well as the ability to use 50 watt wireless charging. So what gives? Like how is this phone $700 less expensive than the S24 Ultra? Well, give me some time to answer that in a full review because after having used the OnePlus Open for a couple of weeks, I quickly started to notice some issues with the hinge. However, most of my issues ended up being mostly software related. Though there's a few people, one especially a fellow creator named David, whose display completely gave out on him after only a few days. And I don't want to start this video off on a negative note, but the difference between these two devices are pretty crazy right out of the box. The OnePlus Open is seemingly using a much cheaper aluminum. It kind of reminds me of my old Pixel 7 Pro, which did get a pretty sizable dent just from falling off of my desk. The coating, at least on this flowy emerald model, gets pretty dirty, and it's an absolute dust magnet. It's very hard to clean with the aluminum near the camera housing almost looking like it has oil stains all the time. This is something that was noticeable right out of the box and didn't take too much time at all to start to really accumulate. But like that's kind of where things seem to flip a bit. From a design perspective, the OnePlus 12 is fantastic and using this device really makes me miss the soft corners on something like my Pixel. It sits in my hand comfortably, and it is very easy to handle despite its 6.82 inch display. The back texture that's present on this flowy emerald is also very nice. It doesn't feel like anything I've touched before as far as it goes in the hand, and I would say that this finish is pretty premium. Obviously the most striking thing about this phone's design has got to be that camera housing, and we'll get to the specifics and samples later, but I will say that whether or not you think this looks obnoxious, it kind of has the same effect that the Open did, allowing you to use it as a hand rest for your index finger, which makes maneuvering this phone 
even more comfortable. I would say as far as first impressions go, the OnePlus 12 is really holding up with the big dogs, especially when you consider that price discrepancy. I do want to head back to this display though, because it is really nice. It's a 120Hz LTPO AMOLED display, which at this point is pretty much industry standard, but it is a fantastic panel. Playing games on this thing and watching YouTube feels just about as good as any other, and because of its more narrow aspect ratio, the reachability is appreciated, even though I do have a harder time getting to the top of the display. Inside of the display is also a fingerprint reader, which isn't my favorite way to unlock. I'd much prefer being able to press the power button, but even in the S24 Ultra, this is the case, so I will let it slide. However, the fingerprint reader is pretty accurate fast enough to not be an issue, and overall does get the job done. But the thing that I've been even more so impressed with this phone over the S24 Ultra is the 2D face unlock. It works in far more lighting conditions and has less trouble than even the one in the S24 Ultra. And as someone who much prefers face unlock being used to face ID, this is definitely nice to have. All you really have to do is look at this phone and it unlocks, which is really nice and not something that I've really experienced on a ton of devices in the past except for iPhones. It's nice when you don't really have all the attention to bring to your phone to make sure you're putting your fingerprint in the right spot. It's also really convenient when your hand is wet and you're just trying to look at a text or something. I can also appreciate Oxygen OS on the 12 running Android 14. I think that this is as close to Google's Pixel UI as you can get without buying a Pixel or a nothing phone. And as someone who really appreciates the cleanliness of Google's launcher, as well as having things like a scrollable app drawer that sorts everything alphabetically, it's just nice to have. You can also change your icons within this launcher, size, shape, removing icon names, everything that I need to use GoodLock for can be done natively on the 12. And of course, that's something I did immediately. Even the bloatware on this thing is minimal. Sure, you get the OnePlus Store and the Red Cable Club app, but aside from little things like O oh, Relax, which I assume is just a useful Headspace app, there isn't anything that really jumps out. I also really like that the OnePlus 12 uses Google services right out of the box rather than having its own independent gallery app, wallet, and other crap that I immediately removed from default. As far as software goes, the experience with the OnePlus 12 has actually been really great. Now, when it comes to these cameras, there's a lot to talk about, but I'm gonna have more in-depth findings in a full review. But for the last few days I've had this device, I have to say that I've been pretty impressed. The 12's got a pretty large camera array with three pretty impressive shooters, a 50 megapixel wide, a 64 megapixel three times telephoto, and a 48 megapixel ultra wide. The photos that come out of the OnePlus 12 are honestly pretty good. I like the colors, I think the low light performance is pretty great, and when it comes to detail and sharpness, I think that these cameras hold their ground pretty well against the big dogs. If there's one thing that I wish the 12 had though was a 5x telephoto lens, as it's quickly become my favorite focal length to shoot for getting really tight compositions. However, the 3x telephoto with a 70mm equivalent is a great lens, and it can be used to take some pretty stunning photos. It has pretty good background blur and separation, and I don't really have anything to complain about. I will also show some video samples so you can get an idea for what this phone looks like. The rear cameras can shoot in 8K at up to 24 frames per second, which is nice, but if you're gonna be making content, most people tend to prefer 30 frames per second as it looks a lot smoother and natural. So unfortunately, the OnePlus 12 doesn't have the ability to shoot in 8K 30. The 12 can do up to 60 FPS in 4K though, and the video does look pretty good. I'm happy to see a lot of these companies focusing on the video capabilities of these devices. As for someone like me, it's pretty important and the way social media is headed, everyone is trying to shoot on their phone. However, keep in mind that shooting 4K 60 on the front facing camera is only going to do up to about 30 frames per second in both 1080p and in 4k. So maybe keep the 60 FPS mode for shooting shots at half speed like b-roll for example if you do want to match it. But what's crazy about the OnePlus 12 is that you're getting a ton of features that are usually reserved for higher end flagships. There's Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4, and even UFS 4.0 storage. In terms of what's included with the OnePlus 12, there's no denying that this is a feature-packed flagship, just at a lower cost. Will I be switching to it? No. However, I am going to be spending a month with the OnePlus Open and really try to understand this device and come up with a comprehensive video for what makes this phone tick and share any of my findings, including bugs or any issues that pop up if there are any. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, a like and a sub to the channel down below is always appreciated. Thank you so much for your support on the last video. It really does mean a lot. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.